Okay, so we're already at stage two of our project, the design and algorithm stage. Remember, you can pause this video at any time. What you will need for this session is a piece of A4 paper, a pencil, a ruler, maybe a rubber, and something around the size of a 50 pence piece. All will be revealed now. Now, a nice easy way to do the design algorithm is to do it on paper. That means you don't need to know anything about the computer software you're using, you don't have to know how to design or program in the computer software, you can just do it straight on paper and figure that stuff out later. So we're going to design and do a design algorithm of our game on paper first. So this is where my maze is going to be, I'm going to draw my maze here. Uh, and then I'm going to annotate on the maze drawing, on the screenshot as it were, all the different things that happen in my maze game. So first, let's draw the maze, but I need to be careful to make sure that my character fits through the maze. So a good idea is to use something like a coin uh, that will be the size of your character that moves through, so you don't have to make the walls too small or too narrow for your character to fit through. Or you could use something like a Pritt stick or a Pritt stick lid um, just to pretend to be your character as it goes through the maze. Okay, so I'm going to stick with the coin for now and my starting place is going to be down in the bottom corner here. That's where my character is going to start. So I'm going to start to draw my maze. now. I would recommend using a pencil. I'm going to use a black felt tip um, because it'll be easier for you to see on the screen. But if you use a pencil, you can rub it out if it goes wrong. So I'm going to use a ruler to make sure I get nice straight lines for my maze. And the first bit is the character has to get up to the top here. So he's going to travel up this part. And then I want him to do a nice zigzag and sort of come down the other side. So I'm going to draw another straight line. Look how I'm using the coin and giving just enough gap either side for my walls. Okay, so I'm going to draw down to about there, I think. That will do nicely. And then I'm going to give him two options. You can go this way or you can go this way. So I need a nice horizontal line just round about here. Just make sure the character can fit through there. Yep, there we go. Uh, excellent, that's what I like. Um, now obviously you can draw whatever type of maze you want, you don't even have to use straight lines, you can use uh, circular lines or diagonal lines if you like. To make it easier I'm just going to stick to vertical and horizontal lines. Okay, so now my uh, character has to go up this part here, so I'm going to draw another vertical bit going up, probably about halfway. There we go, and I might just make a little opening there and just continue that up there so we can go up here and out this way. Um, and then once he gets to this way, I want him to go around something at the top, so probably about there. Let's see if we can draw this bit out here like that. And then something that he has to zigzag through, there we go. Just to get to the finishing spot. This is my finishing spot at the top over here. Um, so let's make this little bit more a more interesting part here by just putting another horizontal line in there. So he has to get through. Right, so I've got two possible ways of getting to the end of this maze. One is to go up and around and this way and through here and up around there to the finishing point. And the other way is to go around and down and across the bottom here, around here, around here, around here. Okay, so I need to mark on the point where I'm gonna start. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna draw around my coin. That might be a good idea. Draw around my coin and in there, I'm just going to write start. 
Okay, there we go. I've got star and I need to write my end as well. So I'm going to draw around my coin again. And my end is going to be up here somewhere. There we go. This is the point where I have to get to. End. Excellent. Now, my ending, because I'm going to have the theme of a treasure hunter, um, then my ending is probably going to be a, a nice gold colour. So I'm just going to put a little bit of... Uh, well, it's not really gold, is it? <laughs> a little bit of orange uh, in there, because um, he's hunting the gold and he wants to find the gold. There we go. Okay. Brilliant. Now, I will have a couple of other things in my maze as well. So not only does my player has to get all the way to the end, I'm also going to have some obstacles in my maze somewhere um, that are trying to stop my explorer getting all the way to the the end okay so I'm going to draw those in now and my obstacles are going to be because he's an explorer and he's trying to find the gold it's going to be uh, balls of fire that are roaming the corridors so I'm going to have one here at the top here there's my fire I'm not sure whether you think that looks like fire or not <laughs> um, and I'm also going to have one down here. I think that's going to go up and down this bit. So I'm going to draw my little fire in there as well. Okay, now to help me remember what's going to happen, I'm going to draw a dotted line with an arrow at each end, just showing that this fire is going to move up and down here. Okay, and the same with this one. This one is going to be guarding that bit of the corridor. So I've got two uh, fireballs kind of roaming up and down my corridor. So this is really helping me so far. It gives me a clear idea of what I'm going to do once I get to my computer and start uh, designing my character and my uh, baddies, my obstacles and my maze. So I'm just going to write a few notes on here that's going to help me when I come to um, design it. So I'm going to remind myself that this is my main sprite. And he's going to be an explorer. Okay, now these are going to be my obstacles. Uh, and they're going to be fire. Let's just say, yeah, fireballs. There we go. So I've got my obstacles, fireballs, another one over here. Um, I'm going to annotate this just to say finish point. Great. Now, this all looks well and good, but there's going to be um, some things I really need to think about in my game. I'm going to have some things that change and I'm going to have some rules for my game as well. Let's start with the first rule. My sprite will, my main explorer sprite will be moving throughout the maze, but how is he going to move? Um, I need to decide about that. How am I going to control him? Uh, I think the easiest way would be to use the arrow keys on my computer keyboard. So I'm going to do another little annotation here and I'm going to say um, control and I'm going to draw the arrows up arrow, down arrow, right arrow, left arrow. Uh, let's add keys there. So control keys up, down, right and left. Brilliant. Now, what happens if my explorer touches the wall, what do I want to happen? Well, obviously, he can't go through it, um, so I could make him bounce off it, um, but that would be too easy. I think I'm going to add another level of challenge and say, if he touches the wall, he's going to go right back to the start. So I'm going to add that as a rule here. I'm going to say, if... Oh, let's use capitals. Come on, Mr. Wickens. If Explorer 
touches wall go back to start and I know where my start is because I've drawn it in down there so if Splora touches the walls go back to start brilliant so we've got an, a, a big level of challenge now to get around the maze without touching the walls what else have we got we've got some fireballs now what happens if the Explorer touches a fireball well he's obviously gonna have to go back to the start but could we add in lives? Could he lose a life? That would be exciting. Okay, so I'm going to add a little note here. If Explorer touches Fireball, um, go back to start and underline the and lose life so he's going to lose a life and go back to the start now um, that looks great that looks pretty hard so not only is he not allowed to touch the sides but he loses a life if he gets back to the if he touches a fireball let's make it even harder should we have a timer as well and you have to get through the whole maze in a certain amount of time so i'm going to draw a timer up here i'm going to label it timer should we have what a minute 60 seconds do you think okay 60 seconds so timer um, and let's say what happens if he doesn't make it to the end before the time runs out well how about he goes back to the start and loses a life again let's do that okay so um, we need to annotate that somewhere so uh, timer if time runs out back to start lose a life oops lose a life okay what happens if he gets to the end does it go you win so um, screen says you win if he gets to the end so can you see what i'm doing i'm making a note of all of these things that are going to happen this is called decomposition i've got my idea for a maze game and i'm decomposing it into smaller bits and saying well this is what happens here and this is what happens here and this is how i'm going to tr tr control my sprite and that helps me when i come to code my project because I can do each of these things one bit at a time. So this decomposition is really really helpful. I'm decomposing the main problem into all these little bits. Okay, um, now I need to write obstacle fibers move because they move um, up and down by themselves. Right. Um, if I lose, lose all my lives, what's going to happen? Um, so if... How many lives am I going to have? Let's go for three. If lose all three lives, screen says game over. Okay, so I've got what happens there. Now, can you see there's loads of information on my plan now? And I can have my plan, my design, my algorithm with me all the time whilst I'm programming. And it will remind me what I'm going to do, when I'm going to do it, maybe which order I'm going to do it in. And it's decomposed the problem nicely. Okay, there's one more thing that I'd like to do. Now, you don't have to do this, but I always think it's a really good idea. I'm going to note down all of my variables. 
Now variables have a name and a value and they are things that vary. So they change um, throughout the game. They can alter throughout the game. They vary because they're a variable. So let's look at the things that are going to change in my game. I've definitely got a timer. Now that's going to change. That's going to count down whilst I'm going through the maze. So I'm going to make a list down here of my variables. And it's important we do this because when we program, we need to make sure we declare and assign all our variables. That means we need to make sure that the program knows that we've got variables and how to use them. So time is going to be on our list, time. Uh, we've also got three lives. I didn't put an S on the end of there. Uh, so we're going to have lives. They're going to decrease as we go down. So we've got time. We've got lives. Um, I could have a score. So say, for example, if I was, if I get um, 10 points every time I reach the end, I could add to my score. Um, maybe later, if I want to put more levels in, I could add to my score each time. So I might have a score variable there. Now, it doesn't matter if I don't use it. I'm going to put it in anyway. Um, and I just mentioned levels as well. We could have level one, level two. So I might have a variable, which is what level I'm on. Okay, now that's going to help me when I come to do my coding because I can then put all those variables in um, and then I can use them anytime that I want. Okay, now I'm going to call this level one. I don't know what level two looks like yet, but um, let's just go with level one and see what happens. So uh, let's just run through it again. I've drawn my maze. It's big enough for a character to go through because I used a real object to help me so that the lines aren't too close and too tight. Don't make it too complicated just yet. Just keep it nice and simple because remember we're going to make it even harder by using obstacles that move and a timer as well and if you touch the sides you go back to the start. Okay this is my design. What I would like you to do is pause the video now and create your own maze with your own type of character. It might be an explorer, it might be something else. You could do an underwater maze with sea creatures in it. Uh, think about what your obstacles are going to be. Make it nice and simple to start off with. And then start to write down what happens around your maze and how you're going to control your character and what kind of variables you might have in yours. Okay, happy designing!